Why did you think, I need to write a thorough treatise on the gospel? Because America's not gospel hardened. It's gospel ignorant because its preachers are gospel ignorant. We need to understand what the gospel is. It's, it's an absolute necessity. We have reduced the gospel down to four spiritual laws or five things God wants you to know. And that is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. We must begin with the character of God. Who is he? He is a righteous God. What is man? Complete opposite of righteousness. Why is that a problem? I was, I was talking to a group of university students. And I was trying to figure out, you know, what should I say to them? And so I walked out. This was in Europe. And I said, I want to give you the most horrifying news in all the scriptures. And they were like preparing themselves. And, and I said, okay, here it is. God is good. And a student said, what's the problem with that? And I said, well, you're not. So now what does a good God do with people like us? And see, the, the, the entire Bible is written around one gigantic problem, which we don't understand because we no longer study the attributes of God. The problem is this. If God is righteous, he cannot pardon. His righteousness must be satisfied. I hear these evangelists say, instead of being just with you, God was loving. Logic then tells us his love was unjust. God cannot lay aside one attribute in favor of another. And so in order for God to, to, to pardon a wicked people, he must first satisfy the demands of his own justice. He must be appeased as a righteous God. Now, so many liberal theologians will say that's a primitive idea. It's pagan, this idea of appeasing a deity. What you need to understand is the difference is this. In pagan religion, the deity demands that the people appease his wrath. In Christianity, this righteous God becomes a man, walks on this earth, lives a perfect life, the sins of his people are imputed to him and he's crushed under the justice that that people deserves. Our God appeased himself. Our God satisfied his own righteousness on that tree. And that's why the gospel is so splendid. I have preached that thing that I just shared all over the world. And I've had Christians of almost every denomination, I mean, sincere people walk up to me in tears and say, I've been a Christian for 30 years. I've always trusted in Christ, but I never could figure out how the Romans beating up Jesus paid for our sins. And they don't understand that he was crushed under the wrath of God. I was preaching several years ago in a church, conservative, they would have said Bible believing church. And um, I preached on Isaiah 53. It was going to be seven nights I was to preach. I preached on Isaiah 53. The next morning, a contingency from the church, a group of people came from the church and they said, Mr. Washer, the, the meetings have been canceled on the grounds of heresy. And I said, what is the heresy? And they said, you said that God the Father crushed his only begotten son under the wrath of God, under his wrath. And I said, yes, that's exactly what I said. And they said, no. Never. And they booted you? Yes. It's a piece of cake to pass on our gospel DVD, The Biggest Question. See? But if you're afraid to do it, we've got teams all over college campuses around the country. Here you go. Passing out The Biggest Question. It's a perfect gospel presentation, but we need for you to pay for them. It's called The Biggest Project. Get involved. Find out more at Wretched. Here you go, sir. Dot TV. All right. Sweet. And no one.